Hey everybody and welcome to my Machinist Controller Guide. My name is Brian for work to game and in this guide we're going to talk about several things, namely our HUD layout, my cross hotbar layout, and various macros and settings that I might be using. But just a few things of note, this is obviously a guide to help give you some ideas about what to do. It's really at the end of it going to be about personal preference, so really make this your own. Take anything I show you today and feel free to throw it all out. Take something that you think you like or add your own in the comments below. Let me know what you're doing and let's have that conversation so we can all just find a better way to play. And now at the same time, this guide is also about muscle memory. So if you're doing something that's very comfortable to you, don't change it up just because I show you something different. Muscle memory is always going to be key in success at learning your job and your rotations. And finally, this guide is going to use some macros. Macros at a DPS level can be a DPS loss, so use macros with great power and great responsibility. Again, this is all about personal preference, so if a macro doesn't make sense for you, don't use it. But for me, I really want to focus in on some consolidation of some skills that aren't necessarily a part of my regular global cooldown, but off the global cooldown. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with my HUD layout. If you don't know where the HUD layout is, it's going to be under System, and then under HUD Layout. And here you have the ability to lay out your whole HUD. Now, I've covered this in depth in various other guides, but just to give you a quick highlight, I've got my various skills and abilities that are focusing in on the machinist. So I have my heat gauge and ammunition gauge right above hotbar 3. Status and filaments, I have it broken up into buffs and debuffs. Now, hotbar 3 it usually is the number one question I typically get. This is a glow, this is a cooldown hotbar. This is just to communicate various when various skills are off a of cooldown. So I'm not actively clicking on any of these things. Uh, but I do set this and I do make this active for myself. So if you have a keyboard and mouse, you can drag and drop uh, these skills onto hotbar 3. Otherwise, you have to use the virtual mouse. And I've covered that a little bit, but I'll cover that here just in a minute. Now I have my left W cross hotbar and my right W cross hotbar my main cross hop bar, and then parameters and hop bar two, et cetera. Like really this kind of tries to make it your own. I usually spend a lot of time focusing in kind of where I'm circling on the screen right now. And that's really kind of important, but whatever you lay it out, however you make it your own, that's great. Now, one thing I do note is that I have hop bar four and five over here. This is just to help educate myself. This is for my own training to help me kind of work on various openers for that job. This is job specific. If you don't know about that, you can click on the particular hotbar and you can click on UI elements and settings. You can control whether it's on or off and the various grid style that it is. Uh, there are other settings that relate to sharing and we'll cover that in the last section of this video. Now, there isn't really much to the HUD layout. It's really gonna be about your preference. I've seen some really interesting stuff, so feel free to come in here, play around with the system and make it your own. But I try to focus in on where my heat gauge and ammunition gauge are where my hotbar three is, uh, and then how it relates to the overall package of the machinist here. So let's go ahead and talk about what skills I have laid out for these abilities. So starting with my cooldown bar, hotbar three, I've got Rook Overdrive, Second Wind, Invigorate, Remove Barrel, or AKA Goss Barrel whenever it's off at, because I've overheated. Then I've got Barrel Stabilizer, Heartbreak, Quick Reload, and reload and the reason I have heartbreak here is that I actually have a macro here with Goss round and I'll show you that macro here in a little bit then on my W cross hop bar left I've got refresh and tactician refresh being an MP restorability and tactician being a TP restorability and then I have turret retrieval right here then I have Bishop auto turret which is a macro and I'll show that here in the last section Rook auto turret, so bishop and rook right here. Then I have hypercharge and flamethrower. Flamethrower being an awesome ability that you learn at level 70. Then I have cooldown, quick reload, reload, and spread shot being my AoE ability. Then on the right hand side I've got wildfire, rapid fire, hot shot, and ricochet. Ricochet being a wonderful off the global cooldown AoE ability. Then here, typically I have split shot, slug shot, and clean shot. And these auto upgrade when you overheat, but this is generally a nice little rotation whenever they do trigger, especially if you're using reload, uh, just to kind of have that ABY or 
or pretty much you know circle x or x circle square uh, triangle yeah <laughs> having to translate uh ps4 buttons in my mind and the, like i said i have goss round which is also joined with heartbreak heartbreak being something that triggers at 20 percent, so it's not always active so i didn't feel like i wanted to use up a full sl slot for it and then goss round being an off the global cooldown every 15 seconds ability so i kind of just join those two together so you'll end up mashing on this if you decide to use that and on the right W cross hop bar, I have dismantle, reassemble, and blank, which is a knockback. But reassemble is fantastic, and so is dismantle. You want to try to use these and kind of pair these up as often as possible. Not at the same time. I'm just talking about reassemble to clean shot or things like that. But uh, dismantle, a 60 second, you know, reduces the target's uh, damage output by 10%. Really handy. Uh, and again, it's very often, very frequently. So if you find abilities, like one of the things that I really try to avoid is trying to jump around the system so much. And there is, with Machinist, a lot of left trigger, right trigger uh, kind of elements, especially because I have reload on one trigger and then I have these abilities on the other. So just again, like I said, make it your own, make it to what works and makes it more comfortable for you to play. Now there's another hot bar that we have and we haven't talked about is my expanded cross hot bar. So here I've got, let me go ahead and just, <laughs> it's my hot bar too. This is where I put Rook Overdrive, again communicating it because it's not always visible and I'm not always using it, but I want to be able to get to it and I want to know when it's ready. Then I have Peloton. <laughs> Uh, Ricochet, again, I find that I like to use it here occasionally too. Invigorate for my TP restore. Second win for my self-heal, and you can see that those are communicated here. These are also cross-roll abilities, so feel free to kind of replace any of these cross-roll ability slots with something that makes uh, sense for you uh, at that time. And then I have access to barrel stabilizer. So those abilities that are being communicated, they're off global cooldown. You can see that sometimes they're typically hidden. Uh, I also have the, the reloads over here is that typically if I'm focusing on the right hand side, uh, I might not be necessarily uh, looking over at the left hand side. So I want to make sure that I have easy visibility to when my um, when my reload and my quick reload are off uh, of cooldown so I can use them effectively. And so those are my hot bars. It's, I think it's pretty simple. I think it's pretty straightforward. I find that this is pretty comfortable for me as somebody who's been leveling Machinist and then now at level 70 for the job itself. Uh, typically, a lot of these skills and abilities do work anytime around from 50 to 70. So you can kind of lay this out uh, in accordance with what you have at the moment. But you might kind of make some tweaks and adjustments here and there. Okay, so finally, we want to talk about settings and macros. So let's first dive into our user macros, uh, if we will. And then I've talked about Goss Round quite a bit. So if I click on it, just to have it up here, uh, my macro icon is Goss Round, which will give me the kind of the visibility, the, the cooldown uh, ability of Goss Round itself. But then I'm going to use Heartbreak if it's available. And then essentially I'm gonna use Goss Round, meaning this is gonna fail through a ton of times and just go into Goss Round more often than not. Uh, but as far as it goes, this seems to work really well because these are both off the global cooldown abilities. So I end up just, like I said, mashing on that button uh, quite, quite a bit. So it's, it's really kind of be your preference at this time, but I hope, uh, I hope you like it. I, I really have actually enjoyed this because again, it kind of consolidates two, uh, two abilities. I do wish that I could have this uh, almost auto upgrade to itself whenever it was active. Uh, otherwise, it's just kind of it just kind of sits there for a little bit. You could also not use this macro and put heartbreak, uh, obviously, on your expanded cross hop bar or on your uh, W cross hop bar left or right as well. And then the only two other macros I have are for my auto turrets. So if we look at Rook, basically this is an automatic placement of the turret itself. T means the target. So I'm going to place this Rook at whatever I'm targeting, be it another player or an enemy. Uh, if I don't have a target, it's going to put the Rook on me. It's going to target them on myself. There is another thing you can do, and that's actually where I put it here in Bishop. Now, Bishop being that they're an AOE ability, I want to make sure that they're typically in the thick of it. So they're going to first do the auto turret at my target. But if I don't have a target, it's actually going to use the targeting indicator. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So if I don't have a target, make sure I don't. <laughs> Uh, it's going to use the targeting indicator by default. Now, if I do have a target, it's automatically going to put it at my current position. So, and the same thing applies for the Rook, although I'm not having it bring up the targeting indicator. It's, it's either gotta have a target or I'm the target by default. 
always a matter of personal preference, but that's just something that I found that I've enjoyed. So those are my three macros. It's actually very simple. All this stuff off the global cooldown, not generally part of my rotation, um, but you do sometimes have to get into that mashing mode. If you do use macros, you have to kind of also, there's a ping warning I would give you. Sometimes uh, with, with macros, uh, your ping can have an effect. So, <laughs> and these abilities also don't fall into what's called the general queue. So you can't queue them up uh, and have them immediately ready to go. But for the most part, this seems to work some, uh, just fine and I haven't seen anything negative regarding my DPS affected with that. Okay, so let's dive into my hotbar settings. Uh, this is the third and final uh, act of this guide. Uh, what's important about this is that we talked earlier about kind of sharing. Sharing is important if you're not aware of it. As you play different jobs, uh, your hot bars are either shared or not shared. Not shared means they're job specific. So you can see everything that does not have a, a checkbox here is going to be job specific. So one through six of my cross hot bars are going to be job specific. Seven and eight are shared. And where this is important is that you see here for my expanded cross hot bar, boom right there. But then if I hold the right trigger, left trigger, I have sprint, mounts, book, limit break, all of that. All of these abilities are, these are always going to be the same across all jobs. And that's, uh, in this case, set seven in, uh, for my hotbar settings. Uh, and then obviously here, so this is four and five, and four and five are specific. So as I change jobs, these abilities will go away as I'm, you know, learning my various rotations. Then under cross, this is set and hold. Some people can uh, prefer toggle and mixed. I'm not going to cover that here. You can kind of play around with those if you need to, but I do have my always display W cross hop bar and I return to W cross hop bar um, or sorry, my cross hop bar after I use an input. So if I just use tactician here or sorry, <laughs> refresh, uh, you can see that I immediately uh, shift back into my left hand side. Same thing applies to my right hand side. These are kind of one off abilities that I put out there. They're not a part of my general rotation. Uh, and that's just kind of how I prefer it. You can expand the cross hop bar to be able to do, uh, you know, kind of eight slots, but I have it set just for four and we'll go ahead and cover that right here. So uh, the expanded uh, controls with LT and RT, you can set which hop bars they are. So I have it set to two and then seven. And if you remember back to sharing, two is job specific, seven is for all jobs including. Then W cross hop bar, so is set for LT and RT double tap. And then you can also enable four buttons or enable directional buttons as well, uh, if you so desire. And these are set to three uh, left and right, which are job specific. It is important to note that if you do try to go in and set uh, abilities, you actually have to set them on three. You can't drag and drop to these placements. It is a little bit kind of annoying at that point. I'm hoping at some point that is no longer the case, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so that is those hot bars right there. Uh, a couple other settings that I use, and it's just a matter of preference. Set selection, uh, enable customization for weapon is sheathed and drawn. This means that whenever your weapon is out, so if no weapon, I can just tap um, the right bumper and I'm gonna cycle through various things. And that is what this means right here. So this says hot bar one and seven and eight are available for cycling if I tap the right bumper or essentially R1 on the PlayStation controller. Uh, I then set it whenever my weapon is drawn to not be able to go to any of those other hot bars. Uh, seven and eight where I have some macros, where I have some, again, shared abilities that I don't necessarily want to be able to always jump into. But when I'm weapon is drawn, I can set it here. If you do have more combat abilities, like you want to use hot bar two or three, things like that um, easily, then you can always set this here so that they'll only cycle through the ones that you want. And you can do the same thing for PVP settings and you can even have different settings for PVP here as well. So that is it. That is the settings. That is the hop bar settings. That is the, <laughs> the HUD layout. Uh, the machinist job is very fascinating and it has a lot going for it. Uh, obviously uh, flamethrower being something of really interesting uh, value uh, to me. And then I really like how it looks with the heat gauge itself. You can also, uh, one of the things I did not cover, if I go into HUD layout real quick, you can always set uh, your uh, settings to be kind of what's called simple mode. So if I hit save, you can see that my ammo is now set to kind of a, just a triangle shape. It's smaller. It's not as visible in the way. And the same thing applies to your heat gauge as well. So you can kind of play around with what visibly works the best for you and makes you the most effective at your game. 
Now, I hope this has been some help. If you guys, like I said, have any feedback, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. There's a lot of guides out there. You can always look up various rotation guides if you're looking for more in-depth analysis about the what's the best way to kind of start your opener or close out any various particular thing or any situational kind of abilities. But uh, <laughs> hopefully I've inspired you. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button and sound off in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you uh, as well as what jobs you'd like to see uh, me do next. And uh, anyway, <laughs> for work to game my name is Brian. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Whoa, thank you so much for watching. There should be another video like over here, or there, or a vlog somewhere around here. And the subscribe button is below with the contact info. Here we go.